Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 8th of January. India conducts second dry run for COVID-19 vaccination. State has failed, says Bilawal Bhutto, over Hazara killings in Pakistan. And senior NCP leader says Nepal PM Oli should have resigned after losing majority. And now for all the details. As India gears up to vaccinate its people, the second phase of the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination dry run was carried out on Friday. The day-long exercise was held at three session sites of India's 736 districts across various states and union territories. A second dry run for the COVID-19 vaccination rollout was carried out across India on Friday. The countrywide mock drill to prepare for the COVID-19 vaccination was conducted at three session sites of India's 736 districts across 33 states and union territories. Union Health Minister Harshvardhan, as he reviewed dry run at a hospital in southern Tamil Nadu state on Friday, said vaccines could be made available to Indians as early as the next few days. And right now, two of our vaccines have been given emergency use authorization and we are in the process of ensuring that in the next few days or so in the near future we should be able to give these vaccines to our countrymen this comes as India on Friday continued its streak of low daily new cases of COVID-19. The country's recovery rate stood at 96.36%, while the fatality rate was 1.45%. In a bid to contain the spread of new COVID-19 strain, first discovered in the UK, Chief Minister of the National Capital, New Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal tweeted, all passengers from the UK who test positive for the virus will be taken to an isolation facility. According to the orders, all returnees who test negative will be admitted to a quarantine facility for seven days, followed by seven days of home quarantine. India, as of now, has reported at least 82 cases of the COVID-19 strain. Farmers' protest against new farm laws that liberalize agriculture sector entered the 44th day as the eighth round of talks between the Indian government and the representatives of protesting farmers resumed on Friday afternoon to resolve the impasse. The pharmacists' protest against three new farm laws that liberalize agriculture sector entered the 44th day, while the eighth round of talks between farmer unions and the Indian government took place on Friday afternoon to end the over-month-long deadlock. The meeting on Friday, however, once again remained inconclusive as the government ruled out rollback of the three farm laws, which has been the main demand of the protesting farmers. The government has argued the farmers will gain if private players can buy directly from them, bypassing antiquated wholesale markets. Meanwhile, the farmer unions rejected the government's offer of amendments. Another round of talks between the two sides is now set to take place on January 15. सरकार का लगातार यह आग्रह रहा कि रिपील के अतिरिक्त कोई और विकल्प अगर यूनियन दे तो सरकार उस पर विचार करेगी। लेकिन बहुत देर तक चर्चा के बाद भी कोई विकल्प आज प्रस्तुत नहीं किए जा सके। Meanwhile, the farmer leaders announced they would continue to intensify their protests. On Thursday, thousands of farmers took out a massive tractor march in a show of strength. 
They have warned if the laws are not repealed by January 26, they would take out a tractor rally in the centre of Indian capital, New Delhi. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday said that the state has failed as foreign elements succeeded in carrying out the brutal killings of minority Shia Hazaras in Balochistan. He made the remarks while visiting members of the Shia Hazara community who have been protesting the Sunday's killing of 11 coal miners from the community by Islamic State militants. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday said that the state has failed if foreign elements succeeded in carrying out the attack in Balochistan in which terrorists slaughtered coal miners belonging to Shia Hazara minority. Bilawal made the remarks while visiting the site in Quetta along with other opposition leaders where members of the Shia Hazara community have been protesting the killing of 11 coal miners in Balochistan's much area by Islamic State militants since January 3. The Hazara community has refused to bury the bodies of victims until Prime Minister Imran Khan visits them and the culprits are brought to justice. <laughs> उनका बैकिंग हो सकता है, लेकिन हमारा रियासत का ना कामी है कि अगर बहरूने मुल्क का साजिश कामयाब हो के हमारे मासूम शहरियों को कत्ल करवा रहे हैं। Meanwhile, opposition Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party Vice President Maryam Nawaz blamed Imran Khan of being insensitive and apathetic towards the minority Hazaras. Earlier, Khan, while expressing his inability to visit the protesters, has asked them to bury the bodies and said he would visit them very soon. Moving on. With picturesque landscapes and cultural diversity, Gilgit Baltistan is the ultimate tourist destination. However, the decades long illegal occupation by the Pakistan government has brought the entire region on the brink. Locals blame Islamabad's unwillingness to develop the tourism sector as the reason for its downfall. The remote Himalayan region of Gilgit Baltistan is blessed with breathtaking beauty. However, locals blame Islamabad's indifference in developing the tourism sector of the illegally occupied region has made it out of bounds for the tourists. Locals said Khalti Lake, located in Gizer district, which usually remains frozen from November to February, can become a potential hotspot for winter tourism and sports. But the lack of infrastructure, including road accessibility, mobile network and transport facilities, serve as major hindrances for even the domestic tourists who are left disappointed. ये यूनिकनेस जो इस झील की है इसको हमने जो है समर सीजन में भी देखा है बिल्कुल इतनी खूबसूरत पानी के साथ ये झील होती है और विंटर में ये जब बर्फ जम जाती है तो इसके अलग एक खूबसूरती होती है जिसके ऊपर बंदा चलता है और सारा एंजॉय करते हैं तो हुकूमत को चाहिए कि यहां पे फैसिलिटीज जो है वो पैदा करे ताकि यहां पे टूरिस्ट को आने में आसानी हो और विंटर जो टूरिज्म है वो उसमें मजीद जो है वो मौके पैदा हो सके लोकल से विद प्रॉपर पॉलिसीज एंड प्लानिंग बाय द पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट the tourism sector could have been a major boost to the economy of the whole region. However, the illegally occupied territory has remained backwards and underdeveloped over the years due to the apathy of the federal government of Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani, while refuting rumours about the establishment of an interim government post-peace with the Taliban, has said that the Afghan people do not support the dissolution of democracy. Ghani asserted his main duty as president is to peacefully transfer the power to his successor according to the law. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, while referring to the recent rumours about the establishment of an interim government as an outcome of a peace process with the Taliban, has said that the Afghan people do not support the dissolution of democracy and that his main duty as president is to peacefully transfer the power to his successor according to the law. Speaking at a public gathering in Nangarhar province in eastern Afghanistan earlier this week, Ghani said that the present political system needs to be protected and the power must be transferred peacefully and legally.
The remarks come a day after Atta Muhammad Noor, the ex-governor of Balkh province, referring to his recent dispute with President Ghani over the dismissal of the ex-minister of health, said that until Monday, he did not think about an interim government in Afghanistan, but it is an alternative for him to think about. Previously, few people at the official post in Afghanistan, including a member of the peace negotiating team representing the Afghan government, also talked about the interim government in the country. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal Communist Party's Vice Chairman Bamdev Gautam has said Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli should have resigned when he knew that he had fallen into minority in his party. The leader said he hopes that the NCP stays united even after what transpired since the dissolution of the lower house of the Nepal parliament on 20th of December. Vice Chairman of the ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP, Bamdev Gautam, who has staged neutral in the intra-party conflict in the NCP on Thursday, said Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli should have resigned when he knew that he had fallen into minority in the party. Addressing the National Assembly, Gautam said Oli should have resigned as he knew that the rival faction within the NCP was going to move on no-confidence motion against him on December 20. Gautam, however, hoped that the party would stay united even after what transpired since the dissolution of the lower house of the Nepali parliament on December 20. Meanwhile, Protests against Oli's decision to dissolve the parliament continued on Thursday where rival faction of NCP led by Pushpa Kamal Dahil as part of their second phase protest burned effigy of the caretaker Prime Minister Oli at various locations in capital Kathmandu. <laughs> जुन कदम चालियो तिसका विरुद्ध आज हाम्रो संगठन अनेरा सुयो चाहिँ आन्दोलनमा चाहिँ चरणबद्ध आन्दोलन दोस्रो चरणको आन्दोलनमा गइरहेको छ द लोअर हाउस अफ नेपाली पार्लियामेन्ट वाज डिसोल्भ बाइ प्रेसिडेन्ट विद्या देवी बंदारी अन 20 डिसेम्बर अन्डर रेकमेन्डेसन अफ पीएम ओली साइटिंग रिफ्ट इनसाइड रूलिंग एनसीपी द एनसीपी इज नाउ फंक्शनिंग इनटू टू सेपरेट डिविजन्स वन लेड बाइ पुष्प कमल दहल एन्ड माधव कुमार नेपाल एन्ड अनादर बाइ ओली बोथ फाइटिंग फॉर ऑथेंटिसिटी अफ देयर पार्टी the sale of fur shoes is skyrocketing in the markets of Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir. During the winter season, people buy fur shoes in Kashmir Valley to prevent themselves from chilly weather conditions. The sale of fur shoes is skyrocketing in the markets of Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir as the demands have increased after severe cold and heavy snowfall in the valley this year. The winter shoes known as fur boots are being purchased by locals to prevent their feet from severe cold. The sale of fur shoes is generally on rise as people take them to prevent themselves from chilly weather conditions. Local shoemakers are working round the clock to complete the demands of various dealers. This time the work is good, but the work is good for now. And I'm showing you the internet. हरे को पता चला मौसम क्या है क्या नहीं है अब तो दिखा रहा है कि तीन चार दिन बर्फ है कंटिन्यू तो इससे और काम बढ़ गया हमारा पर अभी अगर देखा जाए तो हर विंटर चल रहा है जिसको हम चले कलान बोलते हैं चले कलान में जो है माइनस सेवन माइनस एट तक डिक्लाइन डाउन हो जाता है यहाँ पर टेम्परेचर तो उसके लिए हमें ज़रूरत पड़ती है यहाँ पर जो शूज़ है जिसमें फर लगा हुआ होता है तो अभी हर एक की नीड जो है यही शूज़ होता है खासकर लोग प्रेफर करते हैं कि यहाँ पर ज़्यादा महंगे जो शूज़ न ले for the past few days, various districts of Jammu and Kashmir, including Srinagar, are receiving heavy rainfall. The mountainous regions are witnessing a fresh bout of snowfall and people were seen bundled up in sweaters and jackets. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button